You're looking live at Launchpad 6, Site 31 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, where Soyuz 2.1A booster rocket stands ready to launch an unpiloted Russian resupply cargo spacecraft carrying almost three tons of food, fuel, and supplies for the multinational Expedition 68 crew aboard the International Space Station. Good morning from Mission Control Houston. In the International Space Station Flight Control Room, bringing you live coverage this morning of the launch of the Russian Progress 83 cargo spacecraft set to lift off at 12.15 and 36 seconds a.m. Central Time, 11.15 and 36 seconds a.m. Baikonur Time. Progress once launched is set for a two-day 34 orbit journey to the International Space Station where it will automatically dock to the Svesta service module on the aft or the back end of the station's Russian segment Saturday, February 11th at 2.49 a.m. Central Time, 3.49 a.m. Eastern Time. The Progress 83 cargo spacecraft again is filled with about three tons of cargo. The breakdown on that cargo is 3,501 pounds of propellant, 88 pounds of nitrogen, 926 pounds of water, and about 1,200 pounds of dry cargo, which includes spare parts and other supplies. A total of 5,715 pounds, or 2.8 tons of cargo, being carried to the International Space Station. Earlier this week, the Progress spacecraft was transported to the launch pad from its processing hangar. The railroad car hauled the Progress vehicle about a quarter of a mile away to Launch Site 31, where it was hydraulically lifted to its vertical position, where technicians began the process of hooking up fuel lines and power lines for the final stages of the processing that will lead to this morning's launch. Now just 13 minutes until liftoff, the flight as it is always for a Russian Progress or Soyuz vehicle will be controlled once it reaches its preliminary orbit by flight controllers in the Russian Mission Control Center, pictured on your screen, in the town of Koryov on the outskirts, outskirts of Moscow. The flight control team has been on console throughout the day, monitoring all the preparations at the launch site in the Central Asian desert. Here in Mission Control Houston, in the International Space Station Flight Control Room, the team of flight controllers have been on console this evening, working in tandem with the Russian flight control teams. And currently, we have about seven crew members. We have seven crew members aboard the International Space Station. From left are NASA astronauts Frank Rubio, Roscosmos cosmonaut Dmitry Patelin, Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, Astronaut Koichi Wakata, NASA astronauts Josh Cassida and Nicole Mann, and Roscosmos cosmonauts Sergei Prokopiev and Anna Kikina. Back in Baikonur, the temperature is 3 degrees Fahrenheit with sunny skies. The 2.1, the 2.1A booster was fully fueled several hours ago. All of the propellants are being replenished now as we are in the final minutes of the countdown that will lead to a launch at 12.15 a.m. Central Time, 1.15 a.m. Eastern Time, which will be 11.15 a.m. at the launch site in Baikonur. Now about 11 minutes and 30 seconds away from launch, and all the preparations are still running smoothly for an on-time launch. Again, that's 12.15 a.m. Central Time. And looking at the orbital mechanics for today, the launch time for any vehicle to reach the International Space Station is selected at the moment that the Earth's rotation carries the launch site into the plane or corridor of the orbit of the International Space Station, which is inclined at 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator. That's the way the phase angle and the launch time is calculated to bring the progress to its two-day 34-orbit rendezvous, which it will enter to deliver again about three tons of cargo to the International Space Station.
now about 10 minutes away from launch and flight controllers are still reporting everything is running smoothly for an on-time launch today. Again, that is launch time of 12.15 a.m. Central Time, 11.15 a.m. Baikonur Time. Their progress is, a launch, is launching atop a Soyuz 2.1A booster, which is a three-stage rocket. The first stage will, with its liquid fuel engines and strap-on boosters will burn for about a minute and 57 seconds before the strap-on boosters are jettisoned and the first stage separates. That'll be followed by a minute later by the jettisoning of the launch shroud. The second stage engine will burn for about two and a half minutes to continue propelling the progress towards its preliminary orbit. The second stage separation will occur at the 4 minute and 48 second mark, followed by the third stage, which will burn for a little over 4 minutes until it shuts down 8 minutes and 45 seconds after launch, followed just seconds later by the progress's separation from the third stage and the initiation of the solar arrays and the navigational antennas to deploy. After third stage separation, Progress 83 will be put into its preliminary orbit to begin its two-day 34-orbit journey, arriving to the International Space Station on Saturday, where it will automatically dock to the Cessna module on the aft or back end of the station's Russian segment at 2.49 a.m. Central Time, 3.49 a.m. Eastern Time. The Cessna docking port was vacated on Monday, February 6, when the uncrewed Russian Progress 81 spacecraft undocked from the International Space Station, freeing the port for Progress 83 to dock. At the time of launch this morning, the International Space Station will be flying 260 statute miles over Libya, North Africa. The seven crew members aboard the station just awoke from their sleep period, but we will be wide awake on Saturday for docking. Prokopiev and Patelin of Roscosmos will be inside the system service module at a control panel called the Toru system, the tele-robotically operated rendezvous system, and would be prepared to operate a joystick in the unlikely event that a problem would occur with the automated rendezvous system. The countdown will soon move into its automated phase that will include the purging of nitrogen from the first stage engines, the propellant drain back to make sure that the first stage of the Soyuz booster has the correct amount of propellant for its first two minutes of flight. Booster propellant tank pressurization will follow and the ground propellant feed will be terminated. Now just about seven minutes away from launch, and flight controllers are still reporting everything is running smoothly for an on-time launch today. Again, Progress will begin its two-day 34-orbit journey to the station today, arriving to the station Saturday, where it will automatically dock to the Svesta module on the aft or back end of the station's Russian segment Again, that docking time is 2.49 a.m. Central Time, 3.49 a.m. Eastern Time. Once progress arrives to its preliminary orbit, there will be a series of critical burns of its engines. Those are known as delta ver DV burns or delta velocity burns, basically a change in velocity burn. It's the first automated maneuvers that will raise the progress to match that of the International Space Station. And now just about six minutes until launch, the countdown proceeding on track. Once progress arrives in the vicinity of the station early Saturday morning, Sergei Prokopiev and Dmitry Patelin will be inside the FESA service module at a control panel, ready to operate a joystick in the unlikely event that a problem would occur with the automated rendezvous system.
five minutes until launch. The countdown still proceeding on track. Again, we're looking for a launch time of 12.15 a.m. Central Time. Now only four minutes away from launch, we should be hearing controllers of the blockhouse and Baikonur reporting a purge of nitrogen for that first stage. The fuel lines and other elements of the rocket engines are purged with nitrogen to proof them by removing vapors or fuel and oxidizers. The first stage will be pressurized at about the two minute 45 second mark before launch. The pressurization of the first stage fuel tanks will optimize the pressure of the fuel, helping the structural support of the rocket as it sits on top of the launch pad. Again, you're getting a live look now from launch site 31 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. The progress running through final procedures, ready to begin its two-day 34-orbit journey to deliver about three tons of cargo to the International Space Station. about two minutes and 30 seconds before launch. Everything's still running smoothly. There are two structural umbilicals against the side of the 2.1A booster. The first will reject about the 35 second mark before launch and the second, and the second will reject at the 20 second mark. It is the second umbilicals retraction that will initiate the auto sequence start for engine and liftoff. And now coming up on the two minute mark before launch. Again, we have one minute and 32 seconds until launch. Now one minute and 30 seconds from launch. At this point, ground pellet feed has now been terminated. Now coming up on the one minute mark. Now one minute from launch, the Soyuz rocket is now on internal power. T minus 45 seconds to lift off. Vehicle switching to internal power, T minus 27 seconds, and the first umbilical tower has separated from the booster. T minus 20 seconds and counting. The auto sequence has been initiated. Launch command has been issued. Second umbilical tower separated.
and we have liftoff. Liftoff of Progress 83, the next vehicle in the supply chain to the International Space Station. Good roll, pitch and yaw, program reported from Baikonur. First stage performance reported to be nominal. Good vehicle stabilization reported. Good chamber pressure reported on the first stage. First stage performance reported to be nominal. One minute and 22 seconds into the flight, the Soyuz booster is passing through maximum dynamic pressure. Flight is reported to be going good, going by the book. Good structural parameters reported from the launch engineers in Baikonur. One minute and 45 seconds into the flight, everything reported to be going well. Standing by now for first stage separation. Good pitch ro and rotation nominal being reported from Baikonur. First stage separation confirmed. The four strap-on boosters have completed their job and dropped away at 29 miles in altitude. Second stage engine is up and burning. This will be about two minutes and 39 seconds of st second stage performance. Flight controllers reporting everything operating nominally. The Soyuz booster traveling almost 5,000 miles per hour. Again, the second stage will last until about the four minute and 48 second mark into flight. All parameters reported to be nominal from the blockhouse in Baikonur as we approach the three minute mark into flight. Confirmation of launch shroud jettison. The rocket's altitude now about 49 miles high, traveling at a speed of 5,203 miles per hour. Second stage engines reported to be operating nominally. Getting a view now from the Soyuz booster. Again, all the vehicle parameters reported to be nominal. Again, second stage engines are reported to be operating nominally. Coming up on the four and a half minute mark into the flight, standing by now for second stage shutdown and second stage separation. Again, you're looking live now from a camera on the Soyuz booster. And we have second stage shutdown and separation. Stage. 
third stage engine is up and running, everything looking good. Now traveling just over 9,500 miles per hour and 100 miles in altitude at the five minute mark into the flight. Now being propelled by the single engine of the Soyuz third stage, the engine will thrust and burn for about four minutes. All structure parameters still reported to be nominal. Good third stage engine performance reported. Coming up on the six minute mark into flight. Third stage performance continues to be solid, propelling the Progress 83 cargo craft into its preliminary orbit. Again, you're getting a view from Progress with the solar rays there at the bottom of your screen. Six minutes and 30 seconds into flight, third stage engine still burning nominally as the Progress heads towards its preliminary orbit on its journey to the International Space Station, delivering about three tons of cargo. About two minutes of powered flight remaining. Again, you're seeing a view from the progress. Third stage performance still reported to be going well. Seven and a half minutes into flight, the progress and the Soyuz now traveling 14,000 miles per hour, 124 miles in altitude. The trajectory flattening out, about one minute of powered flight remaining. Now at the eight minute mark into flight, since the progress lifted off, progress now traveling almost 15,000 miles per hour and 125 miles in altitude. All structure parameters still reported to be nominal. Again, all structure parameters still being reported to be nominal, and we will stand by for third stage shutdown and spacecraft separation. Third stage shutdown confirmed, and the spacecraft separation confirmed. Next step will be the deployment of the solar arrays and navigational antennas on Progress 83. And we just got a view of the arrays deploying. And again, getting reports now from the Mission Control Center in Koryov that the solar arrays and the antennas have deployed. The Progress 83 resupply spacecraft now 
officially in its preliminary orbit, which begins its two-day journey to the International Space Station to deliver about three tons of cargo. We are now getting our first view from an external camera on the Progress 83. This is the first test of the telemetry stream you see on your screen. Now from the Progress 83 back to the control center in Koryov, where the Russian flight controllers now begin their work to follow the journey of the Progress 83 to the International Space Station. Recapping the milestones from today, liftoff occurred on time at 12.15 a.m. Central Time, which was 11.15 a.m. at the launch site in Baikonur. The Soyuz 2.1A booster lifted off from Site 31 in Baikonur and performed a series of three nominal burns to propel the Progress into its preliminary orbit, where it is now. Progress 83 is officially on its two-day 34-orbit journey to the space station, where it will dock to the Svesta module on the aft or back end of the station's Russian segment Saturday, February 11th at 2.49 a.m. Central Time, 3.49 a.m. Eastern Time. We'll have live coverage of the rendezvous and docking starting at 2 a.m. Central Time, 3 a.m. Eastern Time. Progress 83 will stay docked to the station for the remainder of the year. With Progress 83 safely on its way to the National Space Station, that will wrap up our coverage for today. This is Mission Control Houston.